we go. game that actually tells you to just let it happen. Cool. In a dark room, it says. Play in a dark room, it says. Shut up my computer. Play in a dark room, it says. I'm gonna regret this, but you know. Uh, just a square, the square at the right is barely visible. Well, my brightness is <laughs> maxed out, and I don't see shit on the right, so. Uh, thank you. You random masculine individual. I don't know what I'm doing, but we're gonna find out. So wait, square on the right is... Holy hell, in a handbasket, that's dark. Um, the square at the right is barely visible. Yeah, I don't see a square on the right side at max brightness. I see a square at on the left at like 145. I don't. I never see a square on the right though. <laughs> oh well, this will be fun. Uh, Michelle, this is called Amnesia. Apparently it's a collection of games, there's three of them. I don't know much about them. Um, they're kind of, they're, they're horror games. And I don't expect it to, to be not bad. You're from Ghana, wow. It's pretty far away from anywhere I've ever been, so... Wow. Hope you enjoy immersing yourself in the world of amnesia. Oh man. Oh yeah, there's three games, and I, this is like a collection of the three, and um, I don't know which came first, so I was just going to start from the left, and that's this one. Um, I show effect, yes, yeah, show everything, because I don't know what I'm doing. I can send. Commentary. I don't count. Max that shit out, my dude. Okay, actually, this is hurting my eyes. Like my TV is like bright as shit, but the I guess I it's still just not bright enough for this game. Um. Shell the game. Oh my god. Yeah, 
Yeah. Oh my god, Cameron, what do you want? <clears throat> what in seven hells do you want? It's no way to greet me. Okay, what do you disrespectful. want? disrespectful. Okay, what do you freaking want? You're just gonna sit here in this party. That's what's gonna happen. Why? You're playing Amnesia? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Wait, how many games? You've got the collection, how many games? Three. I don't know which is which, so I started from the left. Okay. This okay. game does tell you to be immersive, and me being in this party is not very immersive. I want you to know that I got Luna's Howl. Okay. I saw. Congratulations. It's probably okay. trash. Nerf in battle. Oh, dude, dude, dude. Oh my god. I was playing with it in PvE, and it fucking eats. What about it? I'm sorry. It destroys. I should probably it destroys. Get the fuck out of my party if you don't have to. Get the fuck out of my dog. This is crazy. Get the fucking ban. Get the fuck out. Go. Why did my computer not shut off when I click to shut down? That's what that button does. I got peed on today. Get the fuck out. I, I believe it. Daniel. Damn, Daniel. Lee. Lee. Okay, that's better. Get fuck my freaking phone, dude. Why are you still here? What, what happened mean? to your immersion? What about your immersion? Well, you said I'm gonna sit here in this party, so. Alright then, you are. You are then. You know what that means, Cameron? Bye. Okay, that just got really loud. There we go. I wanna be a... I wanna see... I wanna be a kid. I can't read the freaking hand. Make sure to check those whenever I get stuck. Oh, that's really bright! Holy Jesus Christ. I'll give you two bucks for this. Hi, my name is Thomas Grip, and I'm one of the co-founders of Frictional Games. I worked with engine code, gameplay code, design, and many other things for Amnesia. In my commentaries, I will mainly focus on the design behind the different parts of the game. I hope you'll enjoy them. <laughs> That's not very impressive. <laughs> okay. The name of this level is Rainy Hall, and it's supposed to be a combination of atmosphere setter and tutorial for the player. We wanted the player to start the game in a slow way so they could settle in and get used to how the game works. Amnesia is not a game with constant action happening all the time, and we wanted to have a constrained map where the player gets used to this. The only thing you need to do is to follow it. Tracks is something that becomes very useful in later levels, so we try to teach players this from the start. Cool. I'll need That's a very real looking gun. Thank you. 
I mean, that's better than some nicknames. Okay. Michelle, has anyone ever told you that suicide is a bad idea? Touchy, touchy. One like freezes. So, and then L1 to throw it open. I, I, don't, I don't understand how it's supposed to throw it. I already got the broom stuck. Great. Why follow the tracks when you cannot? Okay, you can't throw shit. Like, any distance. Throwing distance is zero. Pretty. Michelle, do you want to talk about that thing that you that thing or no? Well, oh, I get it. Oh, you can only throw it open away from you. You can't, like, yank it towards you open. That's kind of weird, but I guess it makes sense. I love Sunday school.
Oh, the wall's gonna stop. Jamie. there it like forces me down to the ground okay or unless that was just that little sequence I get it. You can't survive in the darkness. Makes sense. So you're telling me that no one in this universe of this game thought to m make a torch and just kind of carry it around. Loading screens to talk about child and child. Crestception. It's a crest on a crest on a crest. This is one of the first levels that we created for the game, and it was initially part of the archives level, which we will reach in a bit. And we just started out with a pretty different design, and when we redesigned it, the maps did not fit. This caused us to split them up and scatter them out. So in the first design, after this corridor, the archives level was supposed to follow, and the room lying there now was built much later. In fact, the first designs did not have Daniel waking up with an amnesia at all, and it was actually added later on. In the first story draft, Daniel still had hidden memories, but he was unaware of this at the start of the story. However, as we redesigned things, we found the waking up with amnesia thingy, although a bit cliche, much more fitting. I can hear something, and I don't want to turn around. Michelle, that's somehow worse. You ever stand in line 
and then you hear somebody just like right behind you, like super duper uncomfortably close. And you know it's like, what the hell dude, but at the same time you just don't want to turn around because that would somehow make it weirder. Oh well, fuck dude. He's just insane, there's something here. Someone's just slowly munching on some chips, obviously. Someone's story. Buskus. Loud book? Okay. <clears throat> Okie dokie. This one, obviously. Hi there. My name is Luis Rodero. I'm mostly the tool programmer, level scripter at times, and perhaps the main reason why the rest of the core team at Fictional Games is pretty much forced to speak English at our internal meeting, as I am the only non sweet here. Now, what a Spaniard is doing with a bunch of Swedish guys is a whole different story we won't be discussing today. By the way, I will be talking mostly about tools and scripting. Hope you like. I can barely understand this guy. I didn't talk the editors them. themselves went through a lot of design changes during the development. Not that many in visual appeal as in internal stuff, like data structures and handling. This happened mostly because at the beginning we only knew the basic stuff that needed to be in them, and as they grew in features and functionality, they started to kind of fall apart, mostly due to my big lack of previous experience in projects like this. Right now I loud what the hell still sounds in my head when I look at some parts of the code, but I am still proud of them. They can also get a bit buggy at times, but hopefully this won't happen again in the future. And I already got some nice ideas for the next iteration of the tool. What a legend. Lewis Rod. Ooh, gimme. Yeah, I'm probably gonna need to touch it. I don't touch it. Ah, it's so bright! Wow, that's bright. Okay, wow, that's whoa, that's bright. Is that like spooky scary? It's, it's locked. Oh no, that means I missed a key. Give me the key to your home. So, man. I just clear off these damn shells until I find the key. Though. <gasps> they mentioned solving a puzzle, so this is obviously the first puzzle. But 
towers that are put. compels you. Do I have my brightness up too high? Is that why it's like freaking? I don't think I should be able to see the end of that hallway. <laughs> That's not how lighting should work. The weird Doritos man only exists in that hallway. Does that mean that hallway is special? More special than that? This is, I feel like. Dude, what if somebody lives here though? Like, all this trash in some guy's house? can't be in the darkness if everything else is the darkness. I don't see a lock or a keyhole, so I don't know how that needs to Oh, did I seriously get stuck on the first puzzle of the game? Hi there, my name is Luis Rodero. I'm mostly the tool programmer, level scripter at times, and perhaps the main reason why the rest of the core team at Fictional Games is pretty much forced to speak English at our internal meeting, as I am the only non swede here. Now, what a Spaniard is doing with a bunch of Swedish guys is a whole different story we won't be discussing today. By the way, I will be talking mostly about tools and scripting. Hope you like. What are the controls on this page? L2 run. Oh, I have a lantern. So wait, R2, R1, triangle, square, R1, R2. The editors themselves went through a lot of design changes during the development. Not that many in visual appeal as in internal stuff, like data structures and handling. This happened mostly because at the beginning we only knew the basic stuff that needed to be in them, 
and as they grew in features and functionality, they started to kind of fall apart, mostly due to my big lack of previous experience in projects like this. Right now I loud what the hell still sounds in my head when I look at some parts of the code, but I am still proud of them. They can also get a bit buggy at times, but hopefully this won't happen again in the future. I think it's really cool that the developers like just are, were brought in to speak about the game, but I can't And I already it. got some nice ideas for the next iteration of the tools. No, I don't want to go back. No. This is one of the first levels that we created for the game, and it was initially part of the Arcast level, which we will reach in a bit. And Nisha started out with a pretty different design, and when we redesigned it, the maps did not fit. This caused us to split them up and scatter them out. So in the first design, after this corridor, the Arcast level was supposed to follow, and the room lying there now was built much later. In fact, the first designs did not have Daniel waking up with an amnesia at all, and it was actually added later on. In the first story draft, Daniel still had hidden memories, but he was unaware of this at the start of the story. However, as we redesigned things, we found the waking up with amnesia thingy, although a bit cliche, much more fitting. I've touched every freaking book I can find. I am an idiot. Hello everyone, my name is Mikael, and I'm the writer for Amnesia, The Dark Descent. Drugs. I think we can all feel the story kick-starting as we finish the letter from Daniel. The game itself is just filled with confusion, and I think we are really doing the player a service keeping it simple in the beginning. Basically try to take your revenge on Alexander, that is the premise of the game. You don't really need to dive any deeper than that, but hoping that the player will care about the story, they have the entire game in front of them to decide if they think killing Alexander is justified or not. Who the hell is Alexander?
Dude, that didn't fill it at all. <laughs> I was all that didn't even budge the amount of oil I have. Wow. Nineteenth of August, eighteen thirty-nine. I wish I could ask how much you remember. I don't know if there will be anything left after I consume this drink. Don't be afraid, Daniel. I can't tell you why, but know this. I choose to forget. Try to find comfort and strength in that fact. There is a purpose. You are my final effort to put things right. God willing, the name Alexander of Brandenburg still invokes bitter anger in you. If not, this will sound horrible. Go to the inner sanctum. Find Alexander and kill him. His body is old and weak, and yours, young and strong. He will be no match for you. One last thing. A shadow is following you. It's a living nightmare, breaking down reality. I have tried everything, and there is no way to fight back. You need to escape it as long as you can. Redeem us both, Daniel. Descend into the darkness where Alexander waits and murder him. Your former self, Daniel. Wow. Why am I supposed to kill a man? I don't know who he is. Wow! <sighs> Triple A game, maybe. I don't know. Whoa! Dude. Oh! Wow, indeed. you ever get lost after playing a game for less than 10 minutes? Wait, can I throw a chair? Okay, for real, am I missing something here, or? I gotta be. I was missing the lantern that was in plain sight before. Plain sight. <laughs> Sometimes I just gotta jam it. I didn't mean to do that. What a waste that was. this game.
That's new. So I'm role playing as a cat right now. Oh, I'm an idiot. Hold down R2 with the right stick in the right. I'm an idiot. Oh, Moses, that was great. Wow. I'm gonna be blind by the time I finish this game. Run, hold on to L2 while moving. Hello, my name is Mark McKender. God damn it. I'm a 3D artist and level creator at fictional games. I started out as a helper during Penumbra Overture and was finally hired as a full time artist in the later part of Penumbra Black Plague. I like this I don't believe I have. Is it connected to the. What did you call it? The inner sanctum, my most precious chamber, Daniel, and it lies well beyond the refinery. In fact, it lies beneath the very stone of Brennenburg. I don't actually want to get down there. Wow, holy frick, that's bright. The entrance hall was first shown in our first gameplay trailer. And what a layout then from 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 we made changes to incorporate these objects into the earlier levels. An example of this can be seen if you compare the hole in the roof now with the one from the first trailer. The new roof was made in the middle of the project when you built level 9 back hall. A special version was made to give the roof hole in the entrance hall more depth and detail. I want more depth and detail. Skidoo. Sometimes it just yanks my camera to some something I don't want to be looking at and it's annoying. Scattered throughout the game you can see some signs written in Latin. The reason for using it is that it was considered a language of culture and science, as most scientific and philosophy authors wrote their works and treatises in it. As we are dealing with a castle dwelt by a pretty smart guy that has been around since the Renaissance period, Latin all around the place was something we should expect. Being the only guy in the team that had a direct contact with Latin in high school to be more precise, well it was kind of logical that any translation to be done would have my name on it. Translating stuff into Latin was kind of strange and fantastic to do. At first I had a classic Latin dictionary, so if I had to translate any modern term I would have to track its etymology down to the Latin equivalent, or look for a synonym or similar expression that had a direct translation. Then I had the luck to come across some dictionary for modern stuff online that addressed most of this stuff for a huge lot of terms, so it couldn't have come in a better time. Some days I would have Sebastian dropping a list of 9 or so entries to be translated, and before finding this dictionary it was quite a lot of work. On a side note, we even had a choose your Latin poll on a couple entries, just to pick the one that sounded better for everyone. Results were pretty unanimous by the way. For some final words on this, I must confess that, while I was pretty good at this in high school, that was like 15 years ago, so right now I'm not 100% sure translations are correct at all, but I took the time to make them at least plausible, so my apologies go in advance to any Latin guru up there playing the game, as I myself get on the verge of losing my temper when I see stuff like this obviously made up. 
If you haven't followed our development blog back when it started, you might have missed one of the biggest changes in our production pipeline. Two years back, we started a toolset side project to ease and speed up the creation of content for the game. I'd say the level editor, which is what we, or more specifically James, Mark and Marcus, have used to build all the halls and corridors you are working through right now, is the big start of the pack. It's working in a nutshell, while all the models and assets are actually made in software like Maya or Blender, everything geometry-wise in the levels is put together in it. Then lighting and sweet details like decals and fog are added in. While this approach might sound simple, really nice stuff can come out from it, as you can see in the game. So what you're saying... So what you're saying is there's all these places. All these places. I forgot what that means. Oh, five out of five is. I've had it ready. <laughs> You're a gem, you know that. Those aren't, I don't actually know what cockroaches look like. I know they're big and kind of like these, but these look more like kind of like really polies, and really polies are cool. So, yeah. whoa, that's pretty freaking cool. <laughs> what, what is that sound effect? Something, 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 something. Oh shit, I thought there was two doors up. There are. Oh, fuck it. I don't think this is where I can go.
How do doors work? every freaking drawer now. That's what that means. Every freaking drawer I see is getting pulled out. I swear to God. To finish more. this little overview of our tools, I must mention the material editor, available both standalone and built into the other editors. The program itself is very simple to use. You have some material types defined by the engine, and you can throw in textures to be used for diffuse, normal maps, height maps, as well as some variables to control specific parameters for a material type. When I was writing it, I could just stare while the preview model rotated around itself and the parallax mapping effect was on when testing, just for fun. That was short and I didn't actually listen to anything. Another piece of the toolset is the model editor, used to create the entities you are interacting with while playing. Basically, we take a model and set up some parameters like physical bodies, joints, and user-defined variables. We can also attach sub-entities to them, like lights, particle systems. When an entity is finally set up, it is ready to be placed in a level using the level editor. Examples of entities here are doors, lamps, most furniture, critters. I am not a fan of this man eating Doritos in my ear at all times. Right off. <laughs> the wow, the thing fell out. Nice. On the 16th of May, 1839, the unflinching African sun has continued to plague our expedition, making it impossible to dig until dusk. How Professor Herbert managed to find the location in these vast plains of nothingness remains a mystery to me. When I asked him about the tomb again, he told me about the legend of Tin Hanan, the mother of us all. An interesting story in its own right, but I can't help feeling there's more. Later that evening, we uncovered a passage beneath the dunes leading to a sand-covered stone structure. The professor was confident it was the tomb we sought and ordered the others to clear the way late into the dark, cold night. Tomorrow, I shall lead the men into the ancient structure, hoping to reach the burial chamber. No matter what the professor is keeping from me, the dig should yield something interesting to take back to London and the British Museum. So he's just some guy. He's like an, he's like the head of an excavator crew or something. He's just some guy trying to make a buck and he gets screwed over by a professor, I guess. <laughs> okay. This level was changed a lot and I think it's one of the most tweaked levels that we got. Not only was it part of the big archives level that we had to split up, but it was also hard to get engaging enough. The problem here is that we don't have any sort of fun mechanic that we rely on to make the game engaging. Instead, we rely on story, atmosphere and environment. This is true for many other levels and the game as a whole, but these were kind of the, the one of the larger levels that we made and also one that didn't have much puzzles and such. So, when testing it, we quickly get bored with it and we wanted to add more spooky events to spice it up. 
but then later on testing proved that these events weren't that necessary and we also felt that they were a bit lame and not fitting so we decided to remove them. Then the back part of the level we wanted to make that a more linear experience with the current player getting trapped and all forcing the player say to linary, solve the like story linear, wall and but find secret door in puzzles. binary in the same previously word. testers often missed that they can solve these problems. The level is now very different from the early design. Of course it is. Hello. Goodbye. All doors open inwards, I guess. I went in this room first, right? Did I? No, I didn't. What's this? 17th of May, 1839. My hands tremble as I write. I feel a need to document my tribulation, for I fear that my memory will fail me if I linger. Today, I took some men and ventured into the dark, ancient passage we uncovered. Our torches burned faintly in the murky air as we slowly made our way underground. The men were superstitious and fearful. They argued loudly, and I felt their strange language getting to me. I mustered my strength and yelled at them to continue down the slopes and broken steps. The crudely carved passage confused me. It looked much older than the 4th century structure we had expected. The twisting path emerged into a great antechamber. The walls were lined with statues unlike any I'd ever seen. Despite their unearthly quality, I felt a strange familiarity toward them, which haunts me still. At the far end of the chamber, a great slab of stone sealed off whatever lay ahead. I gave the order to raise it, and as I pushed through the narrow space, the heavy stone suddenly dropped, sealing me inside. I was trapped. Damn. This guy got trapped in a place. A bunch of dead people, probably. Sorry to hear, buddy. This looks bright and cheerful, which means it's scary and dark. Nice. Such high quality game design. This is where I was coming before. Okay, I did. I came out of that door. This is a little spooky. Seriously, the guy eating Doritos can stop. Holy crap. I get it. Doritos are tasty. Let us... <coughs> Whoa! Fish eye. Oh, 
Is that what yeah, that is? They've used the heck out of fish eye in this game. I was here before, right? Okay, awesome. We've gone full circle. Lower the sensitivity just because that. It's obviously important. I have a bad feeling about that. That door. Yummy. Oh. Dude, I keep picking up oil, but my oil isn't going up. What the hell? Wait, that's, that's disgusting. Those. The door is locked. Is there another entrance? Okay, so it is that other thing over there. And then I'm going to come back through here. I understand. It all makes perfect sense. Okay. No one sane would be here in this crap, and yet... Oh, head is pounding and hands are shaking. Oh, yeah. Understandable. Is that a cave in? How is there rocks caving in from above when there's sunlight and trees below? We're obviously at least on like the second or third story, and yet there's like a cave in above us. Are we attached to a mountain? What's going on? Blood? Somebody freaking... Oh, oh. Can't roaches. Again, my oil is not increasing. I need more oil. When I started writing, I had only to outline the framework for the story and the first few levels in the game design document. So I ended up finalizing a lot of material for the first levels, and then when those were done, we planned out the last two thirds or so. This had a funny effect since I had to not only cater to the story, but to stay true to the stuff I've written for the first levels. Usually you can go back and forth while writing and change things, but if you have already recorded voices, you really shouldn't because of the costs. So the first text really shaped the rest of the material in an interesting way, and made them matter in a way I hadn't thought about. I really like how the th this thickens the story elements as I am able to jump back into the material and keep using and reinforcing certain concepts. Agrippa is of course the most extreme Oh commentary, that's what this is. Okay. ...effect of this method which grew from a small reference to becoming one of the most important characters in the game. Hello? Delinete Imaginis Tabuliatis. Flatness of fancy. Hello. Holy fuck, dude. Oh. Didn't expect the fat rumble. What is this? I like that song. Definitely fan of Kingdom. Ooh. I like the old, old stuff is cool. Note number three, boy. In before the big bad boy spawns.
pallet. <clears throat> oh, dude. Much of the castle is old and hasn't been tended to for centuries. When the shadow arrives, it won't take long until things start falling apart. Oh, it's, it's just way too bright. Anyway, let's do what we can. There isn't much to be done about the wars. We should reinforce weak structures. The ground will tremble and there's a risk everything will cave in on us. Especially downstairs. Here, here, and there. Let's get the servants working on it. Wow, they have servants? What a bunch of rich... Okay, that is way too freaking bright, dude. Wow. Next time that happens, I'm just turning a light on because that is way too bright, way too fast. Oh, wow. Well. We're kind of stuck. I'm kind of stuck. Damn, looking at Oh, swear to Christ above. Unnecessary. Ooh, yep, the first. 
Empire? 17th of May, 1839. After pounding the unforgiving stone wall for what seemed like an eternity, I realized it was hopeless. I was trapped. I fell to the ground, gasping for air, trying to focus. That's when I saw a faint blue shimmer. My weakened body was heavy to carry, but I managed to push myself toward the enchanting light. Did I? <laughs> Pretty, uh... Straightforward directing. <laughs> okay. Hello, farewell. Sprint, little man. It was waiting for me. Enclosed in dark nothingness, I felt myself drawn to the mystic light. So freaking bright. Closing it in my hands. God damn. The faint glow escaped my fingers and began to spark brightly and spirit me away. Unlocking alien memories of spiraling towers, endless deserts, and impossible geometry. The next thing I can remember is the grating sound of stone being lifted. The voices of the Arabs pulling to safety. And grasped firmly in my hands was the broken pieces of a most peculiar relic. Oh, you play that? Wow. Dude, the fish eye is so intense in this game. Oh my god. Can I go home now? Okay, I'm missing something, obviously. Obviously. <clears throat> Is it still in there? No, they reset it. It's sad. Fragile, not robbing a book behind me. Can I throw something at it? Back out with the chair. Come on. Come on. Take it up. Take it up. It's a weak toss, but I'll take it. Oh no, stop. Why? You have to be swift. When you activate the first one, you hear that? If it stops, you'll have to start over. Isn't all this a bit excessive? You can never be too careful, Daniel. Oh, okay. What? What happened? D did, I, did I win? I need the thing. How do I get the thing? Every time I try to pick something up, it lags. In a single player game, it lags. Oh, you want me to read this my damn self? Oh, fuck. Go fuck yourself. So, wait. I need to... I gotta go fast? Oh no, I don't. So there's the door. I came in there. What? 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 I just started something. Oh, I get it. I get it, I get it, I get it. I get it, I understand what I'm doing. Kind of. Just 
to be another one. Oh, no, I get it, 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 I get it. Shut up. This is the one, is it? That's not, that's not YouTube. I mean, I'm not saying that. I don't want you to text me, but you can also talk in the stream thing so I can watch, so I can pay attention to that and you at the same time. You know, I'm just saying, just, just a suggestion. How do I? No! Why must you blind me at every opportunity, my dude? Obviously hiding in the closet. Obviously hiding in the drawer. Not reading that myself. Fuck off. Just be gay. Wow. <laughs> I can't see freaking my phone. That oh wow. I see two heart emojis and then whatever that other thing is. So maybe I'm blind. Oh. Uh I like how I pick up the key and the door opens. I don't have to walk over here and unlock it like a normal door. That's so the big boy. He is here. He is in the game right now. I I can't tell where that's coming from. Fuck it. Get me, get me, get, get me out of here. Oh man. Spooky scary. Satchels are gazing in the dark. Okay, that's not what I want to hear. Notifications. So, oh. um, broadcast advanced settings, obviously. Ah, uh, comments to speech. Comments to speech. supposed to touch the red goo all is good it says sanity wow well <laughs> okay well, yeah that was yeah, there's nothing down there anyways so I want to sprint the jump perfect I'm so good oh that's that it Yes, I, I beat Amnesia. That, that was fun. <laughs> fun game, top quality. I'd buy it for sixty dollars. So wait, there's two ways there, and I think I came from that way. This, that's shut. So there's two ways left and one down. Obviously, down is the right way to go. Meaning. Obviously.
Uh, Shell, did you... I'm assuming you're still watching. Did you give up on Five Nights at Freddy's then? Because, I mean, unless you were really not having a fun time, you could probably beat it. Dangerously low. Make sure to stay in the light and try to make progress. Okay, real quick. Oh, I don't want to. I don't want to exit. I just want to save. <laughs> I want to see what happens if I deliberately like burden myself by not being sane. Stare into the light, my child. This doesn't help my sanity. Okay. That's the right way to go, but I want to see what's up with this. Give me. The particle editor is also a fine part of the tool bundle, and it is what we use to create particle effects for maps and events. We use particles to do nice effects like the flames in torches and the, and the smoke that comes out from them. All we have to do is add one or more particle emitters, set up some parameters like starting position and speed, on all sorts of fadings in size, color or speed. It's funny how you can simulate all kinds of effects with such simple elements. I very much recommend you to try it yourself. You ever just vibrate violently for no reason? Yeah, me neither. Every time. There should be more coop rats. Let me see, let me see. And one part aqua force. Dude, okay, that is more than enough of that. still have zero oil even though I picked up half a dozen oil containers that obviously have oil in I'm an idiot. <laughs> Can you stop violently vibrating every time I crouch, please? No reason for that. In early concepts, this was meant to be a sort of wine testing room and directly connected to the wine cellar. The reason for the whole wine testing thing was that we planned on having more laboratories in lab levels, so a lab here as well felt kind of strange. Then things changed, and only one lab was left in the design. So we changed the name to laboratory instead. The whole wine testing facility that got could make dangerous acid always felt kind of strange anyways. You guys who made this game were on acid.
so nothing to be done here? Did I come here for no freaking reason? Am I missing something? supposed to follow the things and they lead to the thing, so... Okay, that's kinda weird. Oh, is this it? This, this entire area? Okay. You ever feel like there's not enough blood? <clears throat> Dude, that looks really freaking cool. It's like it's the fish eye looking at it. Is that a hint, or... Oh, yeah, no, it's talking about the lore. Okay, yeah, I, I remember when he was talking about the Divinati. Where's the, 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 A major design guideline for us was to give each level a unique theme, something that all puzzles, events, and the general atmosphere was built upon. This makes each level a little piece of the story and theme at large, and also gives them focus so the player is not distracted with too much information. The theme in this level is the strange creatures that lurk in the castle. The player first spots them momentarily in archives, so now is the perfect place to build some fear. There is never any real threat in this level, but it's much darker than any before and there's a constant pressure with boards creaking in the light. The flashbacks also give hints of where the strange creatures come from, making all events focused on the level's central theme. So like... That was pretty cool, but he also said that there's no direct threat to the player in this level, so I can just fuck around. Easy peasy, lemon squeeze. Where did the Baron go? Who cares? He left us enough wine to last us a lifetime! Or at least until tomorrow! That's a save and exit. <clears throat> oh, God. 
It's too damn dark in here. It's bad for your eyes to play video games in the pitch dark. I don't know why they would tell you to do that in this freaking game. Oh, I didn't see the first part of that. I'm sorry. Thank you for believing in me, Sean. I'm kind of wanting to play the Battlefield 1 campaign. So let's see how that goes. 